Do you want insane gear like these for free? If you said yes, which I bet you did, you are in the right place because today I'll be showing you how to beat the new Overlord event, which is going to give you a lot of insane free gear. Even if you're new, no matter if you're a veteran or just starting out, you want to be able to beat this event and it's very easy. So keep watching, okay? Let's take a look at what it's about. As you click on it, you're greeted with this beautiful picture with a bunch of buttons here. The first thing to do is to view story. After viewing every bit of story, which takes no time at all, you're going to get Ains and you're going to get his artifact. These two are very important, okay? I'll start by explaining why the artifact's important. It is important for only one reason, because it is an enhanced artifact, which gives you more currency. That's the only reason. There's no functionality reason that's really behind this. Once you obtain Ains and obtain the artifact, the second place you want to go to is Sandstorm Desert. Once you get in, you're going to have level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I cleared everything. Of course, you want to start with 1, no matter what team you use. Just clear to the highest amount that you can. Let's say you're a newbie and you only clear level 2. Great. Just keep clearing level 2 until you get 500 detailed instructions currency here, okay? Once you get 500, you're going to go out of here again. Go to Overlord's Force, right? Click, click on this button and you're going to purchase this Ring of Ains. This costs 500 currency and is going to give you this ring and another artifact. The main thing you want is the ring. This ring acts as a memory imprint for Ains. Now, of course, naturally, you want to feed this imprint into Ains. After you do, keep trying to grind the currencies at the highest level you can with whatever team that you want to use, okay? It's very easy. The reason behind why you don't want to just try right away is because you want to have at least S imprint, which you get on the third ring before it really gets easy. Otherwise, it's actually quite challenging for a lot of newer players, I would say. Or just stay tuned till the end. If you have enough stats, you maybe can just win anyway with a B stat Ains. But regardless, if you're new or if you're veteran, you want to be able to get enough currency, which the second should cost like 600, the third should cost 700. I might be wrong. But once you buy three of these rings and feed them all into Ains, what you're gonna see on your Ains should be something like this. Here is my Ains, and I just don't care about the stat and everything yet. I've got um, his own light cone. I have not fed the extra one into it yet. And I have an S imprint. To feed the imprint, go over here, remember imprint, and then, you know, you'll see your ring here. I've fed three of my own already. Once you have all of that, go back to the event. Back in the Sandstorm Desert, and now we need to finally beat level 4. Now, level 5 is the highest one, but you can only enter it once, so just beat it one time with whatever team you want. You can manual it as well. Beat it once, get out, yeah? But level 4 is where you want to farm detailed instructions. Why do you want to farm it? This is why. If you get out of there, go to Orbis Treasury, you're going to find this. Loot Exchange and Epic Equipment Exchange, which Loot Exchange, of course, actually want to get all of these. You get good stuff here that can be really good for growth. And of course, we have the Epic equipment exchange insane you get a lot of epic gears here you want to be able to get them so that's why you want to farm as much of those currencies as you can and this will be the guide that mainly explains to you how you're going to do that to obtain the most currencies you want to get to level four and step one put Ains in. Doesn't matter if you don't have anyone else, just put Ains in anywhere. The first thing you'll notice on this screen is once you put Ains in, you'll look at the left-hand side. We've got Lead Hero Enhancement. What does that mean? If we click on Details here, it's gonna um, write what it does. Just read it through if you want, but essentially what it does is the boss has a buff that reduces your stat line. By having imprints, you're gonna lower the amount of which it decreases, and if you're S rank, it basically decreases you by zero. You want to have your stat at 0% reduced. Hence why the higher the imprints, the more stats you're going to retain, and that's what you want to do, right? I forgot to mention this, but if I get out of here, you're going to notice something else. It says lead hero buff here. This is different from the buff that I just explained. This lead hero buff means if you have a level 1 Ains or a level 1 Albedo, which is what's featured in this collab, they're going to instantly get max Mola, max level, max awakening, max everything. You don't have to put an ounce of resource in them manually. I'm going to first start by showing you a free-to-play way to beat this, so you probably don't have Albedo, right? Here's how you beat it as a free to play. Put Ains in front. Put Angelic Momorancy at the back. You have an A-Momo, don't lie to me. Or if you don't, you can check out a fellow content creator named Tristan Wolf. I'll link his video in the description down below. I actually refer to his fastest clear team that I'm going to show you later. If you want to understand this from Tristan's perspective, he's done a really good guide. Check out the video in the description down below. But for now, let's continue. You want a healer at the back and you want Ains at the front. And now I'll show you their stat line. My Ains has a whopping free set of gear, six of them, and it's still overkill. You don't need that good of a stat. In this mode, the debuff that Ains does is guaranteed to land, so effectiveness does not matter at all. The only thing that really matters is the speed. You don't want him to be too slow. To give you a range, think about 170 to 230. That should be a really good range to keep him in. There's no reason to go faster, no reason to go slower. If you're too slow, you might not outrun your skill cooldown. If you're too fast, you might have your skill cooldown too quickly and have your defensive stat be lowered for no reason. And then we have Angelica Montmorency, which is any healer. You don't need uh, Montmorency. You can have Angelica. Or if you want to check out 
Twisted Wolf's video, he used Aether, which still works. I got AM Mobile right here with 16k health on three sets of gear again. All of these are free. You can have her with no artifact. It's gonna still work. But enough yapping. Let's actually start with the showcase. So this is a pure free-to-play way I'm gonna show you with a oh gosh dang watch uh stopwatch as well. Let's see how long this takes, okay? While this happens, I'm going to explain to you how the fight looks like. So you're gonna come in with your two characters. That's all you really need. And of course, try and put more and it'll be faster, okay? So right now you're gonna see that the enemy has score petrol and three of the scorpions. The only thing that really matters to you is the boss damage, right? The boss has like one skill that does a lot of damage. If you if you just watch it, keep it keep an eye out. He's gonna do one skill that does quite a bit of extra damage, but everything else doesn't really hurt you, like at all. Look at this. My Ava was tanking it all day every day. But the only gimmick that Score Petra would instantly kill you for is her passive. So what her passive does is at the 15th Score Petra turn, listen carefully, 15th Score Petra turn. So not 15 turns that pass, including your allies and stuff. After 15 Score Petra turns, it will get berserk and it will insta kill your entire team. So your job is to kill it before the 15th score Petra turn, which is very easily doable with this setup right here. You're gonna realize that the way you do damage is Ain's gonna go with the S3 right here. We're landing the death sentence, right? And now we want the uh, enemy scorpions to take a turn in order to rack up this death sentence. Same with a Momo, same with Ains himself. And then we ask score Petra herself as well that takes a turn to get that stack up. And as you can see, with the high amount of health you have, I'm overkilling it. I don't need that much help. My health is not even like dropping down at all. With all the various buffs, you get so much heals, you get all the barriers and stuff. It's a huge amount of buffs. And as you can see, we are in no time getting to the 12th round already. So by the 12th round, you're gonna take 80k damage on Score Petra here. It's quite a bit. And all you need is one more. If I get one more, Score Petra would die. And this right here, this is the highest amount of damage you'll take. Yep, look at that. It's 10k damage, extra damage. It's quite a bit, I would say. And you'll notice that the speed of my Ains at 180, which is really easy to hit, timed it perfectly where after Score Petra has, you know, has taken damage from Death Sentence, Ains instantly has to S3. This is the fastest way for you to, like, keep that Death Sentence on and then keep dealing damage just at the fastest rate possible. Now, naturally, if you have two other characters at the side, all that's going to happen is you do more damage, number one. Number two, you take more turns for the death sentence rack up, and you're going to completely murder them, right? And with all that yapping, we are finally almost there. Boom, done. We have 80k extra damage, and unfortunately, we need to do it one more time. This is fairly annoying, but it'll be soon, right? Right now, it should have S3. Yep, perfectly speed tuned. Right now, the timer says 2 minutes 41, uh, 2 minutes 43 seconds. So, yeah, we should have this about 3 minutes and something seconds, yeah? Now, right now, the score is going to take a turn, rack up the death sentence. Go ahead. I, I've ran out of things to yap about, so I don't really know what to say. I guess I could say, um, I've met my crush that went to France in a restaurant during Chinese New Year. I just stared at her, and she just felt uncomfortable all the time, and I didn't get to talk to her, so... That's my life. But you know what? Three minutes and 10 seconds in, the final swarm is going to take a turn and we kill them. That's three minutes and 10 second, uh, seconds, guys. I miss my crush. I mean, I kind of gave up. Like, should I Should I keep... I'm not going to keep... It. I'm giving up, okay? I'm giving up. Time to find someone else. I'm too ugly for her, okay? I'm too ugly. But you know who's not ugly? This team. If you're free to play three minutes about their amount, you're going to destroy this um stage. And that's a, that's with two less um units as well. You can add anyone here. It's going to help you with damage at all to skip that final um, third ulti that I used with Ains. You can skip that part by doing just a little bit more damage, okay? Very easy. You can do it with any DPS at your disposal. So that is the free-to-play way to beat this. Now I'm going to show you the fastest way to do this, okay? Again, shout out to Tristan Wolf. I referred the fastest scene based on his video. Basically, he taught me how to do it from his video. Do check out his original. Mine's like a fake. So now for the fastest team. Take note that the fastest team, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you to not spend money, right? If it's fast, it's probably including money, but I'm going to try and like minimalize it. This is the fastest that I know that cost the least maybe, but I'm sure there are more that cost even less that I haven't found yet. But so far, I feel like this is the easiest one that's so convenient for me that I just couldn't find a reason to keep exploring, okay? Unfortunately, you're going to be forced to pull Albedo and still have a limited like Rem and the final slot can be um, swapped out for someone like Camilla. But my Camilla does not have Benimaru's Tachi. You need Tachi for that um, based on Tristan Wolf's video. That's his suggestion, but 
but he also says that you can use Sinji as well. But it's a Moon Knight four star. You might not have her. It's kind of annoying, but I don't have a good Camilla, so I thought I use um Sinful Angelica. Let me break down the idea behind this. Okay, we have Albedo. Why would you want Albedo? Because left side connection hero enhancement. This is basically like a buff similar to how Ains is over buff in this mode. If you click on details, you check out what is um changed. Basically. With Albedo, you get a lot more damage. I'm just gonna like skip till the end. You get a lot more damage, okay? It's a lot more. She even spreads the death sentence to all the scorpions as well. And the scorpion is what helps the boss mitigate damage suffered. So you want to kill the scorpions in order to get your rem to do damage to the boss. By doing enough damage, you get to skip Ains' ulti. By skipping Ains' ulti, you cut the time needed, okay? I'm sure I've made it pretty clear. Let me um, pull up the stopwatch again. And also, just to put this out there, if you're a newer player, you probably don't have a pet and stuff, but veteran players, of course, you know, use your pet, okay? Get the event currency one. Of course, you're gonna laugh at me because this is A. I'm washed up, okay? But A is better than nothing. So it's gonna be more worth it than nothing anyway. So let's just get on it. I'm gonna start my timer right now. And let's see how long this would take. I'm gonna break down the idea behind the team. You already know how the boss works. So this should be a cinch. Let's go. Score Petra is gonna go. It's gonna do nothing. And I want you to take a look at the HP bar of Goshen Albeda when we get a chance to. But here comes Sinful Angelica. We're gonna get the buff here. Attack buff mainly for Rem, speed buff as well to get everyone more turns is gonna speed up the entire run, right? So Ains with the first S3. We're gonna land our death sentence and you're gonna notice after Albedo attacks, we're gonna spread the death sentence to all of the other scorpions. That is insane. The amount of damage that they'll uh, that will do in the end is insane, right? Like, look at that. The death sentence spread towards all the bad. And here of Rem, you want your skill to be opened up on every single character because Rem wants that AoE. And if you shoot counterattacks, that's also good. We want to kill the Scorpion in order to have Score Petra take more damage, okay? So we have another counter here. And by doing that, we kill a mob, we get our demon mode. And this is where we get our damage up. Look at this. The damage is starting to rack up. I missed a crit there. I'm terrible. But we should be all fine. If you attack me with a counter, no counter. Sad. Here comes Rem again. Boom. And then one more. Look at the health bar, right? It's going down by quite a lot. Score Petra takes a turn again. Here it comes. No counter here. Actually, one from Albedo. Why not? But after this, you're going to see Sinful Angelica with a very clutch dual attack here that, you know, from, from her uh, whole kit, basically. S3, Immortality, dual attack with Rem, highest attack. And Demon Mode Rem will finish it off before Ains needs to go for another S3. That took me, I forgot to stop it, a minute and 30 seconds, which is very fast, fast enough for me. I would say you can still cut this even shorter. Go watch Tristan Vol's video. He does way more research than I have, but this is the theme that I that works for me. And it's so convenient because it's my Wyvern setup. I just plug my Sinji, plug my Rem, put it here, and it worked out. So I'm going to keep using this theme. It is very fast anyway. The fastest theme, I believe, is instead of Sinji, one Camilla on the Abandoned Tachi. And you want a damage albedo, some damage on Ains. That will be the fastest, fastest setup, okay? But either way, that will be enough yapping for this section. Now that I showcased to you the free-to-play way to beat it, I've showcased to you one of the fastest way to beat it as well. So yeah, hopefully you have them. If you have them, great. If you don't have them, you can still clear them with just, what, Aether, a Momo plus Ains. It'll take double the time, but it's like, do you really have that many reliefs to farm all of that? Which is why you have way more than enough time to get enough um, currencies for the week. And I would suggest against going all in this week because next week we're gonna get the second version of this event where you will get to obtain speed set uh pen set and crit set i believe which is insane and to answer the question at the start of the video how do you get the gear right you're gonna notice this i didn't get no gear but by beating level four you can only get these things it's either you drop reinforced materials or level 85 epic equipment in 10 runs i was able to get that gear that i showed at the start 103 gear score immunity piece and that's not all right after you have the currency you're gonna go in the uh, treasury and you're gonna have loot exchange these are a lot of things that's really useful for you if you finish everything you can still have epic equipment exchange these are the sets available right now you can get epic versions of them and they could be the best ones that are gonna carry you to like wherever you want to be in the game so yeah what an event in insane insane event that any newer player any veteran would all of us would enjoy so i really love that i added event like this it's not a pain in the ass it has a lot of quality of life it's not that predatory where they are forcing you to pull a character although kind of yes with albedo but 
They give you Ains for free, and Ains is the main source of damage that you need to really beat that team. Again, I'll have to say, I did not come up with every bit of ideas here. Of course, the Ains one is so obvious, right? Healer plus Ains, anyone will understand. But a fast clear team is what I learned from Tristan Wolf. I have his video link in the description down below. So yeah, do check his video out, and I wish you the best of luck to get those 100 plus equipment score gear. And that'll be all for this one. Uh, I'm a guy maker now, Jesus, and a yapper. But either way, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.